When we're talking about the right to freedom of expression, we said it begins with access to information. And then we mentioned that access to information makes for an active citizenship. And thirdly, we mentioned access to information is now part of the SDGs, of the development agenda of United Nations. This is natural because access to information is what gives us the input to draw knowledge and conclusions for the work we do and for everything we will decide. And of course, all development programs need an input of knowledge, need a design, need to know which direction they're going and need to know the facts. This is why we do research before we engage in a strategic plan. So access to information becomes an absolute necessity for everyone in society. Before, this includes access to public information and includes access to all information. In the case of public information, there's always been a debate because before, because of the structures of the state and because we come from the medieval ages where monarchies were never challenged on anything and you would never have a king or a queen having to explain themselves to their, to their uh, people in, in their society, to their uh, Serbs and their, their subordinates, they imposed their decisions. And this was a given and people understood it. So all authorities around them came from that authority of the king and therefore could not also not be challenged and could not be demanded to explain themselves and to give out information. But democracies came to alter and invert the order. A democracy makes the people the most important element of a society. And it is the decisions that the people make what defines the future of a country, including who are the leaders. So the leaders in a democratic society are elected by the people in different forms. There's different forms of elections around the world and there's different models. Some are more presidential, some are more parliamentarian. But in general, the principle is that those that exercise authority are doing it in the name and in behalf of their citizens. And this is the important element. And most constitutions say that the state itself, the institutionality that draws all the people together in a certain territory, is designed to look for the, and to search and to seek the common good. We're all together trying to improve our lives and to have better standards of living, to look for our common good. And in the search of common good, the authorities have to respond to that general goal. So this also changed the logic of information because there was always a tendency to secrecy in, in state matters. Ah, everything in the state has to be sort of secretive. Now the real principle is the opposite. Everything the state does should be public with a few exceptions. Yes, there are some issues that should be confidential. Yes, there are security matters like security operations when they're being developed, not everything in security issues, but security uh, activities at the moment they're happening. Yes, diplomatic negotiations and some other issues that one could understand need some degree of privacy and diplomatic confidentiality. But the general rule is to have publicity so when a Congress makes a decision, the people have the right to know who voted for that decision in Congress. It cannot be a secret ballot. It should be a public ballot. They have the right to see if their congressman or deputy in, in parliament represented them well or took the decision they like. When there's a public policy being decided in any of the executive branch, they have a right to know what is the public policy and if they agree. They have the right to ev evaluate the policy regularly. If there's an environmental impact assessment done because there's going to be a huge hydroelectric project or a big industry placed in some river or some lake, the people around that lake or in the river have the right to know what is the environmental impact assessment and, and, and what is the result and what does it say? How is it going to affect the quality of the waters or their life or their contamination? This is crucial. And the higher level that it goes, even the personal life of individuals becomes public. We believe in privacy, yes, and privacy is an important element to protect, and we must protect it. Our personal communications are ours. But if you assume public office, then it becomes different. Because if you assume public office and you're a public servant, then the people have a right to know 
you keep your family life in private, yes. But let's say you have committed a crime, for instance, against someone in your family. That's not part of the privacy of family life. That is a very relevant fact for the public to whether to know what are the moral, ethical qualities of a leader or whether they want to vote for him again or not. So this is crucial. And with candidates, it happens because they don't like their past being analyzed. But if you're a candidate, that is the condition. You become a candidate assuming that people will research your past. This means that there has to be access to information. A few years ago, like 10 years ago, there was only about 13 laws of access to information around the world. Today, we have 144 laws of access to public information. This is very important. This has been a major development in the world. But what's important today is to make these access to information laws effective. Normally, they're only being used by journalists and by very few journalists. The citizens sometimes don't even know that these laws exist. And it's also very important to ask all states that beyond the law, they should have an authority that regulates the application of the law, an independent authority that becomes the final authority of access to information. This is crucial because this makes it effective. So we're also striving to have many more laws of access to information with many more authorities that regulate the law and to make it effective for common citizens that you can actually go and ask about the budget of your municipality and how was the money spent. I discovered, for instance, in my own country that very few municipalities had a project of treatment of sewer, uh, sewer waters or, or what they call dark waters there because they were product of the sewers. Because most mayors wanted to have visible projects because that would give them votes for the next election. They would have a gym or a stadium or pave the road because that would allow them to be reelected, even though that may not be the most necessary project in the municipality. This is where citizens have to participate. What are the real needs of a community? Well, do they really need a gym or a stadium or do they need a new school? What, what is the reality of, the, of, 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 of every city, every community, every neighborhood? And this is where the transparency comes in. We believe also that now with the SDGs, for instance, we participated in some events on SDG 1, which is eradication of poverty. But eradication of poverty in the world has to be done through many ways. I mean, it deals with questions of land, access to work, to jobs, to invest, to many things. But one of the issues it's linked to is the eradication of corruption. The massive levels of corruption we're finding in many of the major international scandals lately, those funds could have saved the, the, the education system in many countries or could have given food for the population of many regions of the world. So eradicating poverty means also eradication of corruption. And eradication of corruption means transparency and access to information. So this is where we make the link of access to information to all the 17 goals of the SDG agenda. Gender equity means that we understand what is the role of women and what are women subjected to in real life. Do they receive the same pavement for the same work? Do they have the same access to education, to job opportunities, to participation in public life and in society? This is very relevant to understand. And to have this information, to make women conscious of their rights, but also to have everyone in society, women and men that believe in equality, struggling together. So this access to information becomes a paramount, paramount element that brings the judiciary in, involved. Why? Because many of the cases where there is a denial of information from, from uh, authority, the case will end up in a court. Because the court will have to decide whether the, the reasons for denial are valid or not. So it's crucial that everyone in the judiciary have a very clear idea of what is the common standard of accessibility, what are the laws, but also which are the few exceptions where information can be denied. Because that should not be an arbitrary decision of any state authority. It should be thought of in the interest of all society and in the interest of all the state. <laughs>